everyone, it's Sandra Ganley here and I am so excited to bring you the new Country Chats podcast. I'm going to be talking about all things in the Irish country music scene, from singers to songs, dances to dance venues. I'll also be interviewing singers and dance teachers along the way and delving a little bit deeper into the great world of social dance and country music here in Ireland. So I hope you'll be able to tune in. Okay, so I'm delighted to have my special guest on the show today, my first guest on the Country Chats podcast, podcast Ms. Shauna Maxtravok. Hi, Sandra. Hello, I'm, you're, I'm so happy you're here with me. I'm so happy that you are my first guest on the podcast. I, I, wanted, uh, I wanted you to be the first one. I wanted you to be the first guest interviewer, so I'm delighted <laughs> to have you here. Oh, thank you so much, Sandra. It's a pleasure as always to work with you. So we've a lot to talk about. We'll try and, and get through it all. How are you coping at the moment with everything that's going on? I'm keeping good, Sandra. I'm, I'm keeping safe, I suppose, like everyone else. It's, um, it's a worrying time. And it's just, you know, I think we all are doing our bit, which is great to see. Um, as I say, I haven't, I'm, I'm in Sligo. I'm originally from Tyrone, as you know, but I haven't unfortunately seen my family um, at all, only through like social media or through like FaceTime and things like that. But um, at the same time, it's good to be home. It's good to do things that I suppose I never got to really get a chance to do much. Um, and it's, it's good, as I say, I'm just keeping safe and, uh, and I'm hoping that this will all pass very soon because I do miss being on stage and you know, seeing everyone and obviously family and friends as well. So, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm doing my best, I suppose, like everyone. And I suppose that's all we can do, you know? Absolutely. And please God, we will uh, get over it soon enough. So obviously you would have had a lot of bookings and a lot of different gigs in the diary and that's all changed. So is it is it really tough not being able to get out and gig? And obviously, I mean, from an enjoyment point of view, you're you're missing out, but also from... A career point of view you're you're you've lost out on a lot of gigs and a lot of money so it's tough in that sense as well yeah like as as i i know myself that when i went through the diary when this all came to hit um there was gigs like in scotland there was gigs in england um i got opportunities where i was like at festivals that i was so looking forward to being part of this summer and um, coming up which have now been cancelled due to covid19 and um it's it's a real shame because obviously new music as well and get an opportunity to record and to film like for my show it's it's just been really hard and disappointing as well because I was so looking forward to meeting everyone and again as you say for career wise it was going to be there's so many opportunities that I had planned that was coming up that I was so looking forward to and now it's it's not going to really happen unfortunately until further notice till we see what way things go Sandra you know mm -hmm. of course and do you think this will affect the country music scene because that's something that's been in my head um over the last few weeks is will this affect the country music scene for good or for maybe a worse scenario like kind of i suppose what's been in my head is maybe will it will people want to get out and about as soon as it's over and there'll be a big influx to the social dances and to gigs and concerts or will it go the other way where where maybe people might not have the money it's so hard to know what way to go yeah financially it's hard to know because as i say um as you said, I, I personally feel that it's going to, it'll help because I think everyone that I know, especially young people that are love jiving, that's into the dancing, misses it, you know? And I can see that through Facebook when you see videos that people are putting up of, obviously the social distancing, but they're trying to incorporate their jiving, um, the jiving maybe that they've learned through classes. And, you know, I do think a lot of the artists as well, from what I can see through various um, Facebook live, that they're doing live shows as well through their social media. And you can see that they're missing it as well. So no, I don't think it will affect the country scene at all. I think it'll maybe help the country scene as well, because I feel that once this is over, people will look forward to times again where they can be together and go out and socialize and, and you know, enjoy the country music, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. I totally get where you're coming from there. And I suppose that, uh, well, the fitness levels are down anyway. I know on my part, <laughs> my fitness levels are gone out the window altogether when I'm not driving every day. So I'm definitely missing that side of things. Uh, oh, me too, Sandra. I'm trying to walk, even just go for a little walk, as, as I suppose, keeping it within our two kilometres. But go for a walk as much, even twice a day, just to try and keep fit and keep healthy, you know, as well. And 
um, in my spare time, I've actually started now to do baking. I haven't baked from I was so young with my mum. And it's just little things that to keep myself occupied during this time as well, you know. Yeah, absolutely. No, you have to just keep going and doing all them things. So I suppose back on to more positive things. Um, so obviously, so you made the big move from Tyrone down to Sligo last year, wasn't it? Yeah, but a year I've been living now in the West in Sligo and I've loved every minute of it so far. Um, I suppose I may give him a little mention, Mr. Jerry Lavin. <laughs> a lovely fella. <laughs> yeah, he's the reason why I came here. Um, well, I suppose different reasons as well. I, I started working with Ocean FM as well was another reason, um, which I really, really enjoy working for Ocean and uh, it's great to be part of a great radio station as well. Um, but also I love, I just love Sligo. I love it. Don't get me wrong. I do miss home and Tyrone will always be very close to me and I'll always be able to go there back at the weekends and see my family and friends and whatever but um no I have to say I love this part of the world love living here and um yeah I, I really enjoy Sligo Sandra can't say nothing well, well I'm delighted to have you down in Sligo anyway because <laughs> I know my driving juniors have grown to love you um you done our um, third anniversary last year and our fourth anniversary this year thank god the fourth anniversary was just early enough before all this happened and you've done another gig for us as well during the summer so I know we're delighted to have you down in Sligo anyway because um, the kids get to meet you a lot more and you have a few fans, uh, a few little fans around the place. <laughs> yeah well I have to say give credit where credit's due, fair play to you and a huge congratulations Sandra because you've done um, immensely well to, to put this on every year, a fantastic day it was to the fourth year anniversary and I was just delighted and thank you so much for having me part of it because it was just a pleasure to see all the little Jive and Juniors and uh, I grew to love them. I love singing and performing for them and it's great to see them like progressing every time I do see them with all the, the lessons and all the classes that they have went to through you and from learning from you as well. So well done you as well because it's been well, great. Thanks very much. That's lovely to hear. <laughs> and it's funny because when I think back, I, I think I've, I, I feel like I know you for ages but we've probably <laughs> only met do you know maybe five or six times and, and it'll be at a gig or yeah. it should be, be at a work thing it wouldn't necessarily be like like a, a luxury thing and it's funny because obviously we had arranged at my fourth anniversary dance that we'd end up doing something that it something. is yeah so, you know, together well, outside of work and now uh, that won't be happening for the moment but um, no I know the kids absolutely love you um and you've—I remember the first gig you done for us. You were a bit nervous. You were—you were wondering how how to play it to the younger folk. But you've definitely, uh, you definitely done your stuff well <laughs> because they're all big fans of you now at this stage. So whatever you've done, you've done it right. Ah, uh, thank you so much. Uh, it was a pleasure. Like as I say, when you do obviously perform, I perform for so many different age groups but when it comes to the little kids you, you sometimes wonder are they going to listen to you are they going to enjoy your style or your music but I have to say with, what's great about you Sandra and what you do the kids know everything from Big Tom to Nathan Carter to Philomena Bagley it just showed me when I did perform that they know so many of the up-and-coming songs and also the older song, country songs that that obviously we have as well, mm, well you, couldn't, you couldn't have said it better yourself there because that's one thing that I'm always so, uh, I, I really want the kids to understand is it's not all about Nathan Carter and Derek Ryan and them up, them up and coming, or them people that are on the scene all the time. It's it's everyone and it's, you know, yeah, it's about Declan absolutely. Early, Big Tom, all them songs and artists right up to the newer, the newer people. And I suppose as well as that, uh, of course, with you even is just the, the the female singers because obviously it's a male dominated world. Um, so I suppose it it's, is great. it's yeah. having it's it's having a few of the girls so that my younger driving juniors can look up to girls like you. So how do you find kind of the female versus the male side of the country music scene? Does it ever uh, do you ever see like little issues with it, or do you pass any heat, or do you notice? Know, um, I suppose Sandra, like from being in the music scene and being involved now for a good few years, um, I find that it's always very much more uh, male dominated. It's it's more of, like I, I think it's been a lot lot harder for a female artist to make it in the scene. And my aunt was a singer. She was in a band, Julie in the Country Flavor, for like seventeen years years ago she was in the country scene. And back then, even I asked her, was it the same way? And it's always been. 
but it's just it's been a lot harder for a female I suppose a lot of the female artists who want to you know relate to other girls I want the girls you know that's out jiving to support them and and follow them um but I just feel personally for me like it's been a lot harder you know and I suppose that's just the way it's always been as I said and and I think it may always continue I don't know I just I try my best to obviously be myself on stage and and you have to keep up with the style I know as well because you know you want girls to like you and follow you and support you so um I just try to always be myself and hopefully that'll carry me through as well so that I can keep continuing to do what I do you know well I think you're doing a good job anyway in in, in, that, <laughs> in that sense so no fair play to you but I know even in the American country music scene I mean it has always been primarily male and I think I agree like I think that's the way it'll probably stay maybe Um, I think even in the the dance well maybe in the dancing world in the social dancing world I think for a while it was primarily men but I think there's more women coming into it now so that's good a nice, a nice balance it, it is nice I think it's great to see women you know I think and, and I think there's not enough where women support each other you know I think there should be more even concerts more you know that's something I'd like to get involved in hopefully after this pandemic or virus all comes to the halt where it ends and maybe put on some shows where there's more female artists together and involved because you don't really see that sometimes you see it in like I noticed Nashville with the Grand Ole Opry you see a lot of like Carrie Underwood, Reba McIntyre, Dolly Parton all those female artists do come together a bit more than what they do in Ireland and that's what's missing here I'd love to see that happen and hopefully you know it's something I've thought about doing for a while now a long time and I suppose it's just getting the chance to get it together and hopefully it will happen at some stage in Ireland where you can see more the females come together and maybe you know perform or record yeah. a song and you know I um, think that's a brilliant idea absolutely it's lovely yeah so uh but yeah hopefully like as I say you know the likes of the the younger fans and I think it's nice with the likes of the Jiving Juniors are getting as you said you're introducing the females like as well because at least they can grow up and say you know we followed we've seen them these artists when we were young you know yeah. as well yeah so no, that's what I love trying to do anyway and keep it a mix of the males and the females and um, <laughs> so I suppose other stuff that you've been uh, involved with was a good few years ago now Gloria Chira Yes, Lord Chira. Uh, Lord Chira was about five years ago, is it now? Six days of the time is flying. Um, I was approached by Miss Lisa McHugh. Uh, Lisa was my mentor. She asked me, would I like to um, be in the competition? And I thought at the time, I, I suppose I was sort of starting out in the business and I thought, is this a good idea? I not stage fright, but I've never worked with live cameras before, and I thought, oh my goodness, can I really do this? And um, Jerry Guthrie actually asked me the same year would I go in and be his contestant. So it was so lovely to be approached by these artists. And when Lisa asked me, I did. I said, look, I I love to do it. I, I'll give it a go. And um, I was very nervous. Like it was my first time, as I said, stand on that national telly to see like to perform with cameras. But I think looking back now, Gloria Chira. Um, it was a great platform for me to like progress and to get my name out as well for people never knew me especially in the south of Ireland from being from Tyrone in the north no one down south really had heard of me and it's so lovely to up to this day where I meet people from Galway or people from Killarney or wherever it may be from the south and they're saying we watched you while you were in Lord Chira oh, and I think it's so lovely. nice yeah it's so lovely to to know that even after all this time, people remember me from Lord Cherry, you know. So yeah, yeah it was great. It was and great who, else, who else was on it the year that you were on it? Um, the year I was on it, um, Bernie Heaney was one of the artists that was on it. Uh, it was quite funny actually. There was the t there was two other people from Tyrone, Ed Fox and Liam Kelly. There was three of us from Tyrone the year I was on it, and Liam Kelly actually won. So. Um, Already when I was in the competition, I thought, oh my gosh, the vote split. It's completely, it's going to be so hard. And it is, it's all about votes and getting the public behind you. And in fairness, I had a great campaign and, you know, I did stay as long as I could in the competition. I obviously didn't win, but it's not about winning. I, at that time for me, it was like, just take on the opportunity and enjoy it and embrace it. And you know, I met so many musicians through it as well. Never mind people from from the, the contestants themselves but the musicians and getting to work with the live band as well was fantastic for me you know so absolutely was it, was it recorded yeah. in the keys when you done it 
in Galway? Was it recorded in the keys in Galway when you done it? It was. It was recorded in the keys and um, from watching it on television, people might think, God, this is it's a big place, but it's actually so tiny on it's, stage. It's not. A, it, I couldn't believe it. This year, so I've watched it every year, of course, but this year was the first year that I actually went to the keys to, to watch it. And, oh my God, walking in, it's like a totally different <laughs> place. Um, like the stage is fab. It's absolutely fab. But it, it wouldn't be the most ideal dancing venue, but somehow we make it work. Oh yeah, you always find little nooks and crannies, there's little corners, there's always little places that you can dance, but my gosh, like when I first got there, I thought this place is going to be huge, but um, on stage, the stage is great and everything, but it's so tiny, you have hardly any room to move, but at the same time, they make it look very professional, they make they do a good job, Your cheer does a good job in, in what it is, and um, as I said before, just I'm glad that I suppose I can look back now and say I'm glad I done I done it and took the opportunity when I had it as well Sandra you know yeah and obviously then I I mean you said there you were a little bit nervous about that side of things and being on telly and it was your first experience uh well now we've loads of experience because you have your show on Spotlight TV like myself so how long have you been doing your show on Spotlight yeah. Um, I suppose, Sandra, I've been doing Shauna's Country for four and a half years now. Um, a long enough time. I've got well used to cameras at this stage. <laughs> but um, do you know something? I think from doing my show, it's really helped me through my singing as well. I find that um, when I first went on stage, especially around Lord Cheer time, and I was going to different places to perform, I, I find it so, so hard to even speak on stage, to interact with the crowd and the audience and chat to them. But from doing my show and presenting my own show for for over these years, it's really, really helped my confidence. And, you know, I suppose going on stage now, it's like the easier, to be honest, I find the easiest part is actually just singing. It's, you go on, I go on and I can chat away to the, the crowd and there's no problem. Whereas take me back to the time when I started out, I was so nervous, you know. So cameras and presenting for Spotlight, I've grew a great friendship with Phil Mack as well, the CEO of Spotlight. Um, I've also hosted lots of events from England to Ireland, you know, uh, different country music events. Myself and Phil have co-hosted together. And um, I was delighted through working with Phil that he asked me to go to Nashville with him um, as well. So I got to go and visit like the Grand Ole Opry and, Johnny Cash's home place in Arkansas. We done, you know, lots of things while I was out in Nashville with Phil. And um, obviously, there was a tour bus with us as well. So, um, it was great to be part of that. And then, even hosting events, um, I've met so many people through Phil. And obviously, it's a great team at Spotlight as well. You know, um, well, also the Bellamy brothers were over from America, and I got to meet them. And it's just, it was a great, great. Um, when Phil first asked me what I do, it I thought, "Are you joking? There's no way I could do this, like present a show." And he says, "Look, Sean, I just think you could give it a go, and it could be really good for you." And thankfully, Sandra, it was the best choice I ever did make because I've never looked back. And like so many people like the messages I get from people saying we love your show and they kind of get to know you as a person as well you know they get to know who Shauna is and um, from just watching you on telly they come up and they're like oh I love you know I love such and such a song you played or would you play this for my mother and my father and you know it's nice that they can chat away to you and feel at ease with you as well you know yeah and even from what you're saying there it's it's nice for people to get to know you as a person and that's what I wanted this podcast to be not just this is Shauna yeah. and she sings these songs and this is her album and that's that I wanted to be more personal for people to, to, to learn about the real person behind it all and that's what you said there it's lovely of course <laughs> to know in your songs and that kind of thing but just to know the person themselves as well um and even funny going back to where you were saying um when you first started doing the telly you obviously had to learn how to 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 talk naturally and to to as I just say to wing it you have to learn how to just wing it to wing it oh totally because Absolutely. as a performer as a singer for you and as a dancer for me I can get up and dance and you can sing and I don't know about you but when I dance I could be thinking about what I'm going to have for dinner tomorrow I don't be thinking about the present moment I'm just 
the dancing is going on and in the head is a totally different scenario. But then <laughs> you have to learn how to wing it. You just what comes out of your mouth sometimes people think with the telly they just say oh and you'd be reading what's in front of you on the screen oh yeah we we it's totally we might have a few notes in front of us of certain details but it's totally like well it's great Sandra. you've actually you work for spot you you know you're presenting on the channel as well you know yourself like it's Sometimes, you know, even the most difficult part for me, people might think, oh, she's so natural, she does her thing, she's great on television. For me, when it comes to requests, you know, I could get 20 requests to read out and I could get halfway through and be like on a wee roll and next thing make a glitch and it's like, oh, I have to start again. And, oh. you know, it's just, you know, that's what I'm saying. You have to just wing it, go with it, hope for the best that you do a good job. And like, as I say, you know yourself, it's, it can be harder than people. Th people think looking at it so easy. It's, sometimes it's not. It can be difficult enough. You just have to go with it and hope, hopefully, as I say, it works out for the best. <laughs> Absolutely. And you kind of have to have a bit of knowledge. I mean, like even, for example, I don't know about you, but I know if I'm doing a show, I might say, oh, well, sugar, I already used my Denver in the last episode so I can't put him in again so I need to change that song so I need to change it down to to Derek Ryan Sugar what do I know about Derek and you literally have to think on the spot well okay he's from Carlo blah 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 you just have to know facts kind of off the top of your head or listen yeah it. yeah it's yeah. all you're winging it essentially it's not like RTE or TV3 or any of this these where you have your notes in front of you and you have your little cards or you have your your um auto cues yeah exactly and you know what i find as you said we don't have researchers we don't have people coming to us with all this information and you have to have a little bit of knowledge because if you don't oh my god you're snickered you really are yeah. <laughs> and like i think that's why the beauty of spotlight as well i do have to say though i think that's the beauty of it because we can be ourselves and be natural and i i find that when i do co-host these events with phil a lot of people will come up and say oh, I love you and I love such and such, you know, maybe I love, um, maybe your show, Sandra, it could be Caitlin's Country Hour, it could be, you know, Natasha McGee, it could be any of these other female artists or some of the male presenters. And, you know, it's nice that they mention other people as well because it gets me to see that their personalities are shining through in their shows, you know? And um, it's so nice that, that a safe spotlight kind of gives us the chance to do that as well, you know? So it's great to be part of a great channel as well. Absolutely, no, like that, I'm delighted to be part of it too. I think I'm coming up to two years on the channel, so it's absolutely brilliant. I love, I love it, <laughs> thank God. So yes, a big shout out to Phil Mack there because uh, he's, running, he's running the show, so it's great for us. Um, so I suppose other little things, um, I mean, in, in normal interviews that me or you would do, or just general presenters, you know, they're they're five minutes long, they're little snippets of, of, of what's going on in an artist's life at the current moment. But I suppose I always like to talk about what's your what's what's the pros and cons of the Irish country music scene. You know, it's not all happy days all the time. I mean, there is pros and cons, and I suppose of the actual dancing scene and the social dancing scene and the country music scene, do you think there is any pros or cons or anything that sticks out that even even in the last few years do you because i suppose five or six years ago when nathan Hirsch came on the scene there was a resurgence of country music and everyone started going to the dances again like i remember going to nathan character when there was only 20 or 30 people at the dance in the mcwilliam like and like there has been a bit of a resurgence there but do you feel it's got a bit quieter in the last year or two because i noticed it has slightly from a dancing point of view but maybe from a, an artist's point of view you might notice different things i personally well i know when i first started out um like i was delighted that to work a lot with Nathan. Nathan, I was a special guest for a lot of concerts when Nathan was starting out. Um, some people maybe not doesn't maybe, maybe know that, but um, I seen myself when I went to a few of his concerts. Like at the stage where I was performing with Nathan, he was at a peak because wagon wheel came out. So all the young people were starting to go for this craze for Nathan. And you know, I remember he sent me out on stage right after he sang the song, and I thought, my God, all the songs for me to go out straight after like wagon wheel because all I seen was like a row of young girls just standing at the stage. And I thought I have to go out and perform after he does Wagon Wheel. But at the same time, 
you know, at that stage, I could see the, the country scene changing. Um, I've always grew up with country music. Like my dad and mum, as I say, my aunt was in a country music band years ago. But like, I think I've, I've learned so much knowledge through my parents because country music was always played at home, Sandra. It was one thing I grew up listening to forever. And like, you know, like from the American country artists, from George Jones to Big Tom here to... Charlie Pride, Merle Haggard, all the old, like old art, older artists um, that I grew up listening to, I could see younger people like Derek Grant and like Sir Nathan and you know Jerry Guthrie and and all these other people coming in, like they were bringing out songs that were old songs, but giving them like a new, fresh, upbeat, you know, a, a, a twist on them, a new modern twist. And again, back then when Nathan say, for example, he did sort of change the scene a little bit. A lot of young people are coming out. It has been that way for a long time, but I think I would kind of agree with you in the past year or so, maybe a year or so, I've noticed as a singer, it's declined a little bit. There's not, it's not as much hype as it has been, you know? But what I think it's wonderful to see is what, what you're doing even with the Jiving Juniors is bringing the young ones into it because a lot of before Nathan started was nightclubs and discos and there was no, the younger generation was not interested at all in country music. And I know I was one of the rare people that was into it when I was my, you know, 10 or 11 even. Like I was into line dancing and listening to Dolly Parton and all these American singers as well. And none of my friends was really into that, you know, even through my teenage years. So I suppose it was nice to see this, the country music scene changing and it was pros and cons there is a lot of pros and cons and I think, you know, it was, a pro it was great to see a change in and a new generation starting to enjoy the music and like country music. Um, I don't know, I think maybe after this pandemic, it might help, as I said before earlier, like this could actually give it another little boost again um, where people will come out and enjoy the music um, like it was before um, because they've been missing it and they'll realise they've missed it as well, you know, so it could be great for everyone as, as well as the artists, you know. Yeah, yeah. He's a missing it is a big thing um, because it's like, the social, it's the socialising part of it as well, you know, because yeah. um, I suppose like, you know, we take it for granted. We take a lot of things for granted as well. It's a little thing sometimes and the biggest things. And I think, you know, likes of dancing and, and meeting our friends and stuff like that, we can't do right now. So once, as I say, this is all over, hopefully this will help especially the country music scene and the social dances as well. Um, I know ladies that, like I was doing social dances recently before COVID started and like, you know, I even in the shop, there's a lady I know that her mum is just missing it so much. It's like, it's like bingo. It's like the elderly yeah. people want to get back out, you know, they can't. Absolutely. It's the social, because um, for, for listeners out there, I suppose when I'm teaching driving and stuff, there's a bit of a difference between the social dances and the dances in the McWilliam, as I kind yeah. of say. Um, there would be two different types of kind of social dances. And for the people that will go to the social dances on a Sunday afternoon and their tea and coffee and refreshments, for them, that's a weekly thing. It is like being oh, it's, it's absolutely. A weekly, okay, a, a weekly outing. So for them, I can imagine they are missing it big time like in that in that sense yeah so i do think as like you said i think there will be a resurgence again um now i think the reason i, I know i feel like it i think you agreed i feel like it has it has it has quietened down a lot in the last year or that and even if i go to dances i'm looking around me and i don't know the dancers and that's kind of strange yeah. but the other yeah. side of it is i think it's an age thing because i feel like i've been going dancing god for six seven eight years now but you know, at some stage you had to grow up and you couldn't be going dancing every weekend and going That's off gallivanting every single weekend and coming home at four and five, driving home from Manhattan every weekend. And I suppose life goes on and I had to grow up a little bit. So maybe it's a, it could be just an age thing where all the people that were going to dances when I was going, well, they've grown up too. And it's not, you know, people have families and husbands and wives and it's not always realistic to be going god be with the days when we could just get into the car and say where are you where are we go tonight let's go to Monaghan like yeah know, that's it hours. exactly and yeah. I miss those days and I suppose please god if this if this all ends soon I feel like this summer could be like the old days where uh where you could just hop off and yeah well like I know personally I might be a singer but I love dancing like I I feel 
like even jiving and waltzing and, and learn like I've learned so much from being on stage, even looking down really? at people. Honestly, like from even being with Jerry dancing and like I picked up little tips from him because like when you have a partner and you're seeing other people and you go, it's such an enjoyment just to dance. And I've I've like I love dancing so much. Um it's something that I think not only like do I enjoy it keeps you fit, Sandra. It's so good. Like it really yeah. is to keep you fit. Well, I can and notice such a big difference from not dancing every day. As a full time dancer, like I can notice both on the scales and on the steps on Fitbit <laughs> that there is a bit of a difference. But uh, where did you learn how to dance? Did you grow up learning how to dance or was it when you started singing or believe it or not, like I suppose you could say I danced before I sang maybe because from I was no age like literally so young my dad at any family wedding my dad would have grabbed me out to dance to drive on the floor and you know even like some of my friends would have said oh my god you can actually dance you can jive like how did you learn to do that and I suppose I learned the old traditional way from my parents like you weren't dancing. taught you were I just taught, you were made yeah. to do it and you just done it and you don't and know how you done it you weren't exactly yeah same <laughs> so as that then, as, as time went on and progressed and I suppose the country scene developed more like with the younger people coming in, I just was took back by so many new moves and people learning different styles of dancing. And I suppose I learned a little bit as I went on, as I, you know, as time has went on, I've learned more and more. But, um, you know, as, at the same time, it's 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 amazing to see how many young people like you know not even young people like older people are learning the moves as well because there's so many now classes like yourself Sandra and there's so many teachers out there that's learning different moves but you can see that coming through when you're on stage and you see the dancers in front of you you know so it's yeah. great to see it yeah Do you know I'd probably love to be in your position for a change because I mean if I'm at a dance I'm often dancing I'm never just sitting watching and if I am sitting watching it's not for long because you'd be out on the floor so I, I, I would love to be in your position for a change but one thing I will be discussing here on the podcast I want to chat to some of the, the other dance teachers um, about the dancing side of things because I, I feel that that's something that hasn't really been discussed um, I know myself for five, four years ago my thesis in college I'd done it on country music so I looked at the, the dance scene so I did a bit of research on that a few years ago but that would be very different now it would be like a totally different thesis now I think but I do plan on discussing the dance scene in a bit more depth and the different styles and how people learned because like me and you were the same we never just learned it we just we were made to do it we're made to do it yeah exactly <laughs> and I think that's a lovely way of doing it because well I suppose then when I started teaching I had to to figure out well well how how do I teach this I've never been taught so then I had to learn how to teach it which is funny but um no I love that that's how we were brought up like you just went out dancing like exactly yeah was, no you didn't learn how to do it you were just made to and I think that's that's a nice I think it's the age group as well and I suppose the generation we're in like our generation might but I suppose it depends on the family you're from as well like like you said growing up you were the only one of your friends kind of into it I know I was as well my nanny used to sneak me in to <laughs> some of the Midwest radio gigs into the TF and into dances and I shouldn't have been going to dances like at 10 at age 10 or 11 going to dances at 11 or 12 o'clock at night back then no one passed any heat but like I was that child that was snuck into the dances to see these artists like and um so then as soon as I was old enough to go dancing off I went no car. it didn't matter that I had no car I managed I managed a few lifts but um I think it's lovely to look back over the years and I, I know thank god we're still young enough like we're both in it so long but we're still young enough to have to enjoy it and be part of it yeah exactly, exactly. no it's a brilliant scene to be in and I'm sure you'll agree like for me I never thought I'd be working full-time in the country music scene and to be able to say I am is is obviously it's a career and I'm, I, I'm obviously making money and, and that's great that I have a career but it's the enjoyment side of it and the experiences and meeting people and it's that side of it that you can't that's the best part I think you'll agree with that I'm sure. it is absolutely Sandra like and you know it, you know fair play to you even when I went to your fourth year like I've obviously they've been performing I this past couple of years at, at your events but I found that from sitting back and watching the little young ones, I just think it's incredible because, you know, it just like, obviously I don't have any children, but as soon as if, I, if I'm blessed enough to have any, I'll be sending them to Sandra Yanni's class because I thought it's amazing to see, like, 
you know, the little moves that they're doing and their parents even out dancing with them to enjoy, you know, it's so lovely to see that and to have that, to put that together and have that idea that you had and you went with it, like, it's amazing and, and fair play to you for doing it because I, I couldn't imagine, like, as I say, anyone else, like, even suppose thinking, is it a good idea? Fair play to you for taking it on, you know, as well and going ahead and doing it because it's great. I, I think I didn't bother thinking about it. I just went for it. And I suppose at the time, I didn't think it would turn into anything. I just done it for the fun. Um, yeah. Because, like, I, I don't know if you knew, I was a primary school teacher. Um, for right, years. okay. Yeah. So my degree in college was Irish music and dance. So I've done that for four years because I'm an Irish dancer as well. Then I've done a two years master's in primary teaching. So I was teaching for two years and doing the dancing on the side. And then I just left the teaching to go full steam ahead with Jive and Junior. So it was, a, it, it was an accident. I didn't say I'm going to go to dance school. Yeah. It just happened. And yeah. it just, thank God, I just kept going. And four years later, I'm still here missing classes so much, missing the kids. It's, it's tough not being on the go all the time but yeah look you need I think I think when this when this all started I thought this is you know a little part of me was like this is great it's like oh, a little yeah. mini break but then days are going by and you're sort of thinking like it's like a skill you don't want to lose the skill that you have like for me singing like I have to say I, I you know I need to be practicing more. I say that every day. I need to be doing this. I need to be doing that. But, you know, putting videos up. But I suppose, like, you do miss it after a while. After a week goes by, two weeks. And it does get to the stage where you do realize you do miss what you do. And you take the little things for granted sometimes. So I think everyone will be definitely ready for when this is over to get back out again and do what they love, you know? <laughs> no. And, and are you practicing? Because as a performer, I understand kind of how that side of thing works but I'm sure there's people out there who think that Arisha you know how to sing all you have to do is learn a new song or you sure you just need to learn the words like do yeah. you practice or is it just well I have to learn a new song no I do like I, I'm guilty enough to say that I should I don't practice enough I should be practicing a lot more but um like I, I do try and, and do as much as I can even singing around the house I even like that's that's I suppose what I, I'm trying to do like even I haven't done any live shows yet through Facebook social media but hopefully in the next week or so I'm hoping to do that because um I've been receiving a lot of messages you know and it's so lovely to see the people miss you and miss you singing and, and miss to hear you know want to see you and hear you again so um but I suppose especially when it comes to a new song I have to say like I will take time to learn the words and, and try and focus on it and you know do my best with it as well to perform it well and um but again you do get into the habit now when, when you're not outperforming as you'll be fine I'll, I'll practice a wee bit tomorrow but I'm trying now as I say days are gone by and I'm kind of missing it so now it's kind of getting into the stage where like the speakers are going back up <laughs> the yeah. microphone's plugged in it's, you know it's hard it's, to practice when you're an adult and it's your job you know <laughs> yeah you know, there's and no that, there's no test or there's no exam or there's no pressure it's at your I own pace and that's the problem I think us as well I think Sandra because I love people I'm a people's person and I just miss performing for people as well like it's like the kids for you teaching as well like you know when I'm practicing I'm like okay I hope that sounded okay I'm just sort of saying in my own head I wish it was an audience in front of me you know because it just shows you that's what you what you like to do you know and love to do so um but yeah as I said you know it's a good chance opportunity now while we're not doing what we do every day to you know I suppose practice more and get better at what we do and learn new songs new material as well I have a new album which you know, sitting on the wings that I was so looking forward to bringing out, um, which I will do, as I say, once this is over, but um, maybe a single or something could come out in the next week. You never know. Stay tuned. <laughs> you never, never know. And for, so you've mentioned, hopefully you'll have a few live videos up or that kind of thing. So as of this morning, I had a look and you have 9.3 thousand followers on Facebook which is great no way oh my yeah. goodness didn't even know i, I had, had a quick, that i had a quick quick sneak peek so if anybody does want to find you on facebook you have your facebook page there sean max travel music and you have your instagram and that's where everyone can find you and yes. yeah on youtube you have your few music videos up and i'm delighted that the title track for the podcast is one of your songs uh the ah, i love the thank you sandra the that's intro of it. so that's the opening credit music for the podcast i'm delighted to use that but shauna it's been an absolute pleasure to have you as my first guest on the podcast 
um, as, a, as a professional singer in the Irish country music scene and as a friend who I've, well, a friend I've made in the last year or so. Um, it's lovely to have you on and lovely to catch up with you and have the chat. So thank, thank you. you. So no, thank, thanks a million, Sandra. As I say, I can't wait to obviously catch up with you properly, maybe get that coffee or tea or at some stage get a chance to meet with you, you know, outside of work. And I think that's what we were planning to do. But just to say again, once again, thanks for having me on the podcast and, you know, having me as part of a lot of the Javen Junior events. I just love working with the kids as well and working with yourself. And uh, as I say, we'll, we'll hopefully meet very, very soon after this is all over as well and, and get back together again and enjoy what we love to do the most and that's that's all we can say <laughs> absolutely thank you so much shauna thanks a million so that was an interview with shauna max Stravok. i was so happy to have shauna as the first guest on the podcast and um, i've become great friends with her only over the last year just over a year ago and um, i got her to do one of my events for jiving juniors and since then we've got to know each other so it was an absolute delight to have shauna on since our interview, we have come together and Shauna, I'm delighted to announce, has a new single coming out uh, called Shine a Light and uh, Jiving Juniors are going to be getting involved. So keep an eye out for that. Keep an eye out on the Jiving Juniors Facebook page, on Shauna McStravock's Facebook page. Give it a like and download it. And uh, that's Shauna McStravock, Love Shine a Light. Thank you all so much for tuning in to the first episode of the Country Chats podcast. And I'll see you back here again for the next one.